What's up guys, Asian here with another build video and today we're going to be going over the Stamina Warden DPS. Uh, this is kind of uh, kind of on the lower end of Stamina DPS. Uh, stamina Wardens generally don't pull quite as high as Stamina DKs or Stamina Nightblades or even Stamina Sorcerers. Um, but they still pull very good DPS, at least when compared to Magicka DPS. Um, and they do have a very nice um, AoE uh, Major Fracture, Major Breach. Uh, so they do have a place in Vet Trials guilds. Uh, however, if you are in one of those guilds that go for speed runs or score runs or things like that, then Stamina Wardens generally probably aren't going to be the best choice. Uh, all that being said, though, they do provide, like I said, a very uh, good skill set and some pretty nice buffs and debuffs um, in their repertoire. So like our other build videos, we'll be going over gear, our skill bars, our CP point distributions, we'll talk about race, uh, attributes, uh, Mundus stone, things like that. And then we'll top things off uh, with a 6 million dummy parse. Uh, we're going to talk about a rotation a little bit before we do the parse, kind of get an idea of what, um, what we're prioritizing, uh, what the rotation is going to look like, what order of skills you're going to be doing. Um, then we'll do the 6 million dummy parse so you guys can get an idea of what we're able to pull with a stamina warden. So starting things off first with gear, we're going with two-piece Veladrest. Veladrest is still going to be very, very strong uh, in Dragon Bones. It's going to be the strongest monster helm that we have. Uh, you can use other monster helms, uh, stamina monster helms, for example, Selene's, Crags, or uh, even Stormfist. Uh, but Veladrest is going to be the strongest monster helm that you can get. I have a heavy shoulder piece, and that's just to help give me a little bit more health, so uh, I'm not quite as squishy um, in Vet Trials. Uh, so it just helps me, helps out your survivability a little bit. Uh, to me, it's more important to stay alive, to do continue to do DPS, than it is to max out your DPS stats. Uh, that's coming from kind of a mid to high end uh, rating standpoint, not quite you know a top tier MC level standpoint. Where yes, your goal is to max out your your DPS. For our first five piece, we're going with Night Mother's Gaze as a debuff set. Uh, this is a crafted set. It requires six traits in order to uh, to craft. You can ask somebody else to craft it for you, though. Uh, most people will just ask for uh, the materials to craft the pieces you want. Um, there are other debuff sets uh, or buff sets that you can use here. Uh, so, for example, you could go with Sunderflame. Uh, this is going to be a heavy attack build. We are going with, uh, I believe it's three heavy attacks on the front bar during our rotation, uh, three or two heavy attacks. So, we could use Sunderflame to pretty decent effect. Uh, you might be asked to use Morag Tong. Morag Tong uh, increases the damage dealt by poison damage uh, for everybody in the group by 10%. Uh, so it's only going to be really strong if you have two or more stand BKs in the group. Uh, if you only have one stand BK and the rest of the stam DPS are not uh, Dragonites, uh, then it's going to not be quite as strong. Um, so you might not need to wear Morag Tong, but it is nice to have a set on hand just in case you're going to uh, use it. Uh, so those are the three main debuff sets or buff sets that you can potentially be asked to use on your raid group. Uh, the other kind of lesser used buff set is going to be War Machine. Uh, Wardens can use War Machine to pretty good effect here. In fact, that's the set that we're going to be using uh, today. Uh, so uh, that is another potential option for a buff set. If you are one of these stem DPS that gets to use two damage sets, then you can replace this set with something like Hunting's Rage or Briarheart. Uh, it kind of depends on uh, which one you want. Hunting's is easier to get because it is a crafted set, but Briarheart does pull a little bit higher um, than Hunting's Rage when you have Briarheart weapons. For our second 5-piece, we're going with Vicious Ophidian. Uh, Vicious Ophidian is a trial set that drops from all the Craglorn trials. We're going to go with jewelry and two armor pieces, just because it's easier to get VO gold jewelry than it is to get um, other jewelry from other drop sets. That, and you can't get jewelry from Night Mother's Gaze, uh, so we're going with three jewelry and two armor pieces for Vicious Ophidian. Uh, now, you can replace this with War Machine if you would like. Uh, so basically what you would do is if you are going to be using War Machine and you are going to be using your bear build, um, Basically what you would do is you could basically replace Vicious Affinian with War Machine and then keep your other debuff or damage set depending on what you want to use. Uh, so basically you just replace all the pieces with VO uh, with War Machine and there you have your bear build. Uh, so for our uh, jewelry glyphs, we are going with three weapon damage glyphs. Uh, that's just because uh, we are doing a lot of heavy attacks, so our sustain's not going to be that bad. Uh, so we don't have a need to use any regen glyphs. So three weapon damage glyphs is the way to go. For our front bar weapons, I have an axe and a dagger, but you can go with double daggers if you would like. It's kind of up to you how you want to play with that. Uh, this is our debuff set. Uh, we prefer to have our debuff set as our weapons, so it's either going to be axe or dagger of night mothers or sunderflame or borak tong. Uh, this is just so we can maintain the vicious Ophidian five piece, so we can help out our sustain uh, here. 
For our front hand, our main hand, we're going to go with Nernhun with the poison damage enchant, and for our off hand, we're going with Infused with a weapon damage enchant. And for our back bar, we're going with a Nernhun Maelstrom bow with a double ravage health poison. For our uh, race, we are a red guard. Red guards are by far the best uh, race for stamina DPS, uh, closely followed behind by the Khajiit. Red guards are just better for sustain because they get a little bit more stamina than Khajiits do. They get 10% to stamina versus the Khajiit 6%. They get lower, I uh, believe it's lower stamina region. They only get 9% stamina region. But their last passive adrenaline rush is where red guards truly shine. It basically restores stamina for your melee attacks every 5 seconds. Uh, so that really helps out your sustain there. Khajiits are not a bad choice, followed uh, by Bosmer for the base game. Uh, DLCs. Khajiit will outperform Bosmer. Bosmer have 21% stam regen and 6% stamina, uh, while the Khajiit gets, I believe it's 12% stamina regen, or it might be 9% stamina regen, 6% uh, max stamina, and 8% additional crit chance. Uh, so Khajiits do out DPS Bosmer. If you have the Imperial upgrade, you can also go with the Imperials as a race. Uh, they get 10% stamina and 12% health, so you don't have to worry about putting points into health or using a heavy piece if you decide to go with an Imperial. Their sustain is going to be a little bit lackluster because you just don't have additional stamina regen, uh, but that's not really going to affect you too much here because you are using a lot of heavy attacks in your build. So for attributes, I have 60 points into stamina and 4 into health. Uh, I have a couple of points into health, uh, just like with the heavy piece, so I have uh, improved survivability here. Uh, you can go with all of your points into stamina, however, if you'd like, uh, but if you do feel like you're having a little bit of a survivability issues, then you can shift points into health like I have here. Uh, I actually don't have a Mundus, so I'll go pick one up. I am using blue food, so max health, max stamina food. And for our Mundus, we have two options here. You can either go with the lover or the warrior. So I'm going to pick up the warrior. Uh, so uh, whichever one you choose is really going to depend on the debuffs that you get in your group. Uh, so basically, you have a lot of debuff sets, options, uh, sources of penetration for stamina. You have Night Mother's Gaze, you have Thunder Flame, you have Torg's Infused Crusher, or just a plain Infused Crusher, you have Alkosh, and you have Power of the Light for Minor Fracture. So if you have all those debuffs up, you actually will be over-penetrating by about two or 300, so you don't need to put any points into Piercing. In this scenario, you obviously would want to go with the Warrior instead of the Lover, because with the Lover, you would be over penetrating by a very very large margin uh, but depending on how many of these debuffs that you get uh, you might need to use the lover instead to hit penetration cap so remember that the penetration cap is 18,200 so if you are using the lover and that puts you over the penetration cap by a decent margin uh, anywhere more than three or four hundred uh, then it's going to be a TPS loss and you're going to want to use the warrior instead. So it's all going to depend on your group. For So for example, if you're the only stamina DPS in the group, then you can probably go with something like Two Fang Snake or Spriggans uh, and then use the lover to get up to that penetration value that you need. But if you are in a well-organized group that has Night Mother's Gaze and Sunder Flame and an Infused Torx Crusher, uh, you might not need to use the lover because you might over-penetrate when all the debuffs are up. So that's something to keep in mind there. Uh, now for our skill bars, we'll start off with our front bar here. We have Cutting Dive, Blood Craze. You can use the other morph of Blood Craze, Rending Slashes. I like Blood Craze for the additional healing. Subterranean Assault, Deadly Cloak, Bird of Prey. And our ultimate for this build is going to be Wild Guardian. I'll talk about a non-bear build uh, once we go over the back bar. Uh, you actually aren't going to be using Cutting Dive as your spammable. This is just here for the um, advanced species passive, so this increases our damage done by additional 2% while we have Cutting Dive here. It's kind of the same deal here with Bird of Prey. It is fairly expensive to maintain, especially during long fights, uh, because it is a fairly expensive move and you don't have that much Magicka. Uh, so this is mainly here for the additional 2% damage done uh, from the advanced species passive. And for our back bar, we have Bull Netch, Poison Injection, Endless Hail, Razor Caltrops, rearming trap. Uh, so all four of these are pretty staple across all stamina DPS and then we have bull Netch to give us some additional uh, stamina. Then of course if we're using the bear then we have to double slot the bear ultimate. Now if you don't want to use the bear ultimate then on your front bar you would be using flawless dawnbreaker for that weapon damage boost and on your back bar you would be using ballista uh, the bow ultimate here. So you can go ahead and uh, use that if you don't want to use the bear ultimate. Uh, if you are going to be using the bear ultimate though you need, do need to double slot it. Uh, and I'm going to quickly put on War Machine. If you are using War Machine, then you should be using the bear. Uh, but just remember that the bear does count as a pet, so it's not going to be uh, 
it might not be the best option for all fights. For example, in uh, for against the mage in the Ethereum Archive, the bear will spread chain lightning, so that's something to keep in mind when you decide uh, which which ultimates you want to use. Now let's go over our champion points. The CP cap is 720, so you have 240 points across each of the three constellations. We have 75 in Mooncalf, 75 in Tenacity. That leaves 90 points, which you can spread across the remaining nodes, however you'd like, whichever uh, fits your playstyle. I personally have 31 to Warlord, 31 in Tumbling, and 20 into sh uh, 28 into Warlord. Uh, this is just to help conserve stamina uh, when I do have to do things like block or use break free. For our blue CPs, I have 40 into Master at Arms, 24 into Piercing, 56 into Precise Strikes, 56 into Thaumaturge, and 64 into Mighty. Uh, now, one thing that I will talk about here is the, the number of points you put into Piercing. It's all going to depend, again, on the number of debuffs that you have. You want to make sure you're not going over the penetration cap of 18,200. So this particular setup is optimized for my raid groups, which we only get Night Mother's Gaze, Thunder Flame. Uh, we, get a, we have a Stamplar in group, so we get Minor Fracture, and we use Infused Torox Crusher. So we don't have Alkosh, so that's why I have 24 points into Piercing here. Uh, in order to figure out how many points you need to put into piercing, just quickly do the math and then to optimize the rest of your CP, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to want to uh, uh, download two add-ons. You want combat metrics and constellations. What you're going to want to do then is you're basically going to uh, do a parse, uh, preferably an in-raid parse so you get the raid buffs as well. And you basically save that report, you import it here, which will automatically import all the relevant stats you need. You will have to manually input your weapon penetration value here though swap to the champion points tab here you hit calculate and it'll tell you under this column what your CP point distribution should be like uh, so for me uh, this is kinda what it uh, suggests that I use uh, this says 61 here just because I used the actual penetration value for one of my parses uh, dummy parses and I do have lower penetration so that's why uh, it's giving me 61 points here for our red CPs, I like to go with the one-size-fits-most approach. Uh, however, depending on the content you're running, you might need to redistribute your points uh, depending on the content. For example, in VMAW, you're taking a lot more magic damage compared to physical damage, so you might want to take all your points out of Hardy and put them into Elemental Defender and Spell Shield. Uh, that's kind of up to you how you want to play it. Uh, I, like I said, I go with the one-size-fits-most scenario, so I don't have to play around with CPs depending on your content that I'm running. I have 56 into Ironclad, 56 into the Thick Skin, and 64 into Hardy and Elemental Defender. Uh, now you can put 10 points into Quick Recovery if you would like, and that would get you the Field Physician passive, which reduces the damage you take while you res uh, uh, one of your allies. It's a very nice passive to have. You could even go 30 points if you want to get the Infusion infusion passive however it's not quite as strong on stamina dps than it is on magicka dps so i would not recommend uh, putting 30 points in a quick recovery at most i would recommend putting 10 points there for the field physician passive so now that is all said and done let's go ahead and talk about our rotation here so i'm going to be using the bear ultimate here uh, for uh, for this parse, uh, but the same principles will apply uh, if you're using the Dawnbreaker Ballista combo as your ultimate. So obviously you're going to want to start things off with uh, with buffing yourself, so use your potion, make sure you have your bear summon and all that, but I'm not going to do it here because that's going to ruin the actual 6 million W parse. So obviously all your back bar dots can be very important to maintain, so that's Endless Hail, Razor Caltrops, Poison Injection, and Minor Force, or Rearming Trap for the Minor Force. Then on your front bar, you're going to want to try to maintain Deadly Cloak as well for that additional uh, damage mitigation. So this is what the rotation is going to look like. Obviously, you're going to use your potion, have your bear up. I like to start things off using your trap. And then you use a hail, poison injection, caltrops, light attack into subterranean assault, heavy attack, heavy attack, then heavy attack. Then I re-up the dots on the back bar. Then repeat it all over again. Now you will have to reapply your Betty Natch every other full rotation. Oh, that lag. So that is basically it. Uh, so when we use our ultimate, we use it here on the bar swap from our back bar. So that's where we, where we use our ultimate, regardless of if it's a bear ultimate or if it's the ballista ultimate. Uh, it's particularly important if you are uh, using the ballista ultimate to do it at the very end of your back bar rotation so you have all the hawkeye stacks available to you because ballista is affected by your hawkeyes. Uh, we, for the bear ultimate, I like to use it 
um, here on the switch uh, just because uh, it fits in better that way so you have all your dots running while you have War Machine up so you're you know, taking the most advantage of the Major Slayer uptime that you are getting and so with all that said we're gonna do a six million dummy parse uh, you guys kinda saw there there was a bit of a lag spike uh, the connection here the lag here in the, on the PTS has been kind of spotty lately some days I have uh, sometimes I'm getting very good ping other times it just I have those lag spikes there so uh, do keep that in mind when we do our six million dummy parse uh, I might have to deal with a couple of lag spikes here and there uh, so I will try to narrate throughout this bit the, the parse for you so you guys are able to see kinda what's going on in my head here and uh, just and remember, this is going to be using the bear, so it is going to be a slightly inflated parse because we are getting major slayer, and you know pet builds generally pull higher even on stamina. Uh, so that's just keep that in mind there. Uh, so you know in fights where you won't be able to use the bear, you'll be using flawless stormbreaker and ballista, and using ballista as your primary ultimate instead. Uh, the difference is fairly small. Uh, it's about 1k or so, maybe a little bit less than that uh, from my testing. Uh, so it's. The DPS you see here is going to be pretty comparable to that with what you can pull with a Dawnbreaker Ballista combo. So let's go ahead and get started. So you can see here our rotation is pretty much three heavy attacks on the front bar. We wall three up a Betty Natch and use our bear ultimate. So in this situation where you have to use the Betty Natch and your ultimate, you can do a light attack into Deadly Cloak. That's perfectly fine in order to catch up with your rotation so your dots are always uh, active. It's actually going to happen more often than not uh, if you are using a bear build. You can see here we have to use Betty Netch and the bear ultimate. So we're going to do two heavy attacks here. And then light into Deadly Cloak and back to our back bar. I missed the bear ultimate. So I'm going to use it here before I bar swap. So I did miss the ultimate key there, so uh, I just used it at the end. The front bar rotation. So we are starting to run a little bit low on stamina here. I think we will be able to finish the parse though. There we go, that is our uh, 6 million dummy parse with the Stamina Warden. Uh, one other thing that I kind of want to point out here is that we do have a source of Major Fracture here. So you can see here, oh, bear come back, bear come back, there we go. Uh, so like I was saying, we do have a source of Major Fracture here with Subterranean Assault. This is the AoE Fracture Breach source that I was talking about, so this is very strong. Stamina Wards are very great for trials where you have a lot of trash pulls, uh, so that way the tank doesn't have to run around, taunt everything uh, to get the Major Breach and Major Fracture up. The, the healers don't need to do uh, LE Drain on everything. You can just have your Stamina Warden just boom, hit everything with Subterranean Assault, and you have that Major Breach, Major Fracture. Uh, so our parse is going to be a little bit higher compared to some other stamina DPS classes because not all stamina DPS have a source of Major Fracture. So uh, the, to kind of get a more accurate comparison, you want to compare this parse with, for example, um, 
Stam Decay or Stamina Nightblade because they have a source of Major Fracture innate to their abilities as well. But again, we are also getting Major Slayer from War Machine, so this parse is going to be a little bit higher compared to a Stam Decay and Stamina Nightblade, uh, assuming that, of course, Stamina Nightblade is not using War Machine as well. Uh, so, go ahead and take a look at Comet Metrics. We pulled 37.6, 37.7k, which is pretty respectable for stamina DPS. Uh, to kind of put that into perspective, uh, a Nightblade that's using War Machine on a 6 million dummy parse, I've seen them pull around 41, 42k with no cheese. Uh, so it is short of the Nightblade by a good margin, about 3 to 4k, uh, but it still pulls very good DPS. Uh, and like I said earlier, uh, with that subterranean assault, AoE, Major Breach, Major Fracture Source, uh, it, it might be nice to have a Stamina Warden in your Trials group if you're running a trial with a lot of trash pulls, for example, SO, uh, just so your tanks and healers don't have to run around Ellie Draining or Pierce Armor uh, on all the mobs. So we can see here that Endless Hail is very, very strong. Subterranean Assault is also a very strong uh, ability as well. You can see here that it crits for 27k and it's averaging almost 20k uh, for hit, so it's a pretty strong ultimate, uh, not ultimate, uh, ability there. Then Razor Caltrops and Poison Injection. As we can see here, this is the uh, the ultimate when we actually use it. It's very, very strong. Uh, it hits for 30k. It can crit up to 34k. Uh, and this is usually going to be the strongest during the execute phase. It deals more damage at below 25% health. Uh, so this is a pretty strong ultimate. And you can see here that the bear's normal attacks still contribute a pretty sizable portion of our DPS as well. So that's it for this build video. I hope you guys found it informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.